you know, I'm big enough to admit when I'm wrong, and hands up, yeah, I may well have been wrong. Hi, it's me again, and if you watch this channel regularly, you'll know one of my latest catchphrases is the BBC just can't do anything right, can they? And one of the things they've been really pushing is the BBC podcast. And I'm like, why are you spending all this money on podcasts? Some of the presenters they bring in just to do podcasts is so much money. And I'm like, no one's listening to your podcast, BBC. Nobody cares. I don't think people listen to podcasts half as much as people say they listen to podcasts. You know, I... Not really my genre, really. I've, I don't partake in any podcast. I just, they just bore me to tears, most of the ones I've tried. But, as I said at the beginning there, man enough to put my hands up and say I may well have been wrong, because look at this headline. Record 4.53 million people use BBC Sounds during week following the mini budget. That's a lot of people, right? That is a lot of people. 4.53 million people have used BBC Sounds sounds. So uh, I'm pretty sure I may well have been wrong here. I mean, granted on BBC Sounds is the radio stations as well as all the podcasts and the other stuff they do. And there's no actual numbers in here about how many people listen to the podcasts. Well, no real numbers. There are a bit of numbers, but versus how many people just use sounds to access their local radio station or whatever while they were sitting at home. We don't know, but uh, there's still a lot of numbers in it. Let's have a look. So Newscast, Ukrainecast and Boris were among the most popular podcasts on BBC Sounds this quarter. True crime and investigative podcasts proved popular for listeners of all ages. Yeah, they are massive, aren't they? Even on like the non-BBC Sounds thing, like the other places where one would get their podcast, they're always at the top, the true crime and investigative podcast genre. Maybe I should try some. I quite like a bit of that. I like the TV shows of it. Maybe I'd like the podcasts of it. I, I just can't click into podcasts. Anyway... Desert Island Disc was the most popular on-demand radio programme after The Archers. It does amaze me that The Archers is, is still going, but it is it's still going, isn't it? Audio drama Strand Limelight proved popular with innovative new series including English Rose and Exemplar. Never heard of any of them. Have you watched them or listened to them even? Let me know in the comments. Football podcasts continue to drive younger listeners to BBC Sounds with Jill Scott's Coffee Club. The Footballers Football Podcast and Moment of Truth and Match of the Day Top 10. The Sleeping Forecast Long Listen from Back to Back Sounds was the most popular or on-demand music. Who comes up with the names for these, for these podcasts? But one of the interesting things, because I, I have, like I said, I've listened to some podcasts before. I normally use a generated ones. I get them off Apple Podcasts, whatever it's called, or you can get them other places, can't you? There's always ads in there. Not like ads on YouTube where it cuts your video off and YouTube provides the ads. It'd be like if I did a v had a VPN sponsor on here, right, and then I stopped talking about what I'm talking about now and talk about the VPN for a minute. That happens a lot in the podcast. And they must make a few quid from doing it. They must. I've had a few offers for doing it on here. Um, it's not really my cup of tea. So I know roughly what they could get for it. And if you get a lot of listeners on your podcast, that's, that's a few quid. You know, so the BBC is missing a trick here. Isn't it? All these popular podcasts, they could have ads in there. They could have ads in there. And that brings us to the other point, doesn't it? That um, BBC Sounds, you don't need a television license to access BBC Sounds. You can go on BBC Sounds, put the app on your phone or go on your computer and access as much of it as you want without having to worry about paying for a TV license. If it's that popular, they really are missing a trick. And it does astound me that they haven't put like a block on iPlayer or BBC Sounds. You know, when you... If you buy a TV license, you get a TV license number, right? And at that point of buying it, you should set a password. And then when you try and access these things, it's like enter your TV license number and your password. Because I could, if I wanted to, I never would, and I don't think you should either if you don't pay for your TV license fee, go on iPlayer and bring up EastEnders or something, right? And when you click on it or you press play, whatever you're doing it on, it just comes up with a little box saying, do you have a TV license, yes or no? And then that's the only check they do. So... They don't know if you do or not. You can hit yes and watch the show. Can you imagine Netflix doing something like that? When you go on Netflix and you bring up one of their big films or their series or something, and you hit play and it comes up going, do you have a Netflix account? Yes or no? And you just hit yes. And it doesn't ask any more questions. It just lets you watch it. What other business would operate like that? Oh, no, actually, I may have just given the BBC an idea there and stitched a lot of you up from using BBC Sounds or iPlayer or something. Hey. But it does seem that they're missing... A trick, doesn't it? They're giving all this away for free, there's no ads in it, to people who aren't even paying for the BBC. 
It just it just seems odd that they wouldn't they wouldn't do that. I don't know. Like I said, I haven't used BBC Sounds, but I'm man enough to admit I may have been wrong when I was slagging off the BBC for spending all the money on podcasts saying no one listens to this nonsense. Turns out people are listening to that nonsense, in my humble opinion. So yeah, I was man enough to admit I'm wrong. I'm just waiting for the day the BBC can admit they were wrong about some of the stuff they've been wrong about. Hey, but do you listen to any of the BBC podcasts or anything like that? Let me know in the comments below. I'd be interested to hear if any of them are worth trying. Because without a TV licence, you can still use BBC Sounds and enjoy the podcast and the radio and that, you know. So let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Because that way, hopefully, I'll see you in another video again soon when I've... Shut up.